Do you know the Agent Orange, the toxic herbicide widely used by the US military during US Vietnam War, is a synthetic plant hormone. This Agent Orange is sprayed using helicopters in Vietnam forests to uncover the soldiers and also to cause crop loss. And this is the image that shows the defoliation or shedding of leaves caused by this chemical. The drastic effect of this disastrous chemical still persists as long-term illness, birth defects, cancers, etc. Agent Orange is made up of two synthetic auxins or synthetic plant hormones, 2,4-dichlorophenoxyacetic acid and 2,4-trichlorophenoxyacetic acid. Hi friends, welcome to biologyexamsforyou.com. Today's topic of our discussion is how plant hormones regulate plant growth and development within 5 to 10 minutes. At the end of the discussion, you will be having a simplified, clear-cut understanding about plant hormones and precursors, how they are classified as growth promoters and growth inhibitors, role of major plant hormones, oxygen, gibberellin, cytokinin, ethylene and ABA within 5 to 10 minutes. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing this channel. Plant hormones, just like animal hormones, are chemicals that is produced in minute quantities by plants that regulates growth and development of plants. It's broadly classified into growth promoters and growth inhibitors. Growth promoters means plant hormones that is involved in cell division and cell differentiation. And that includes auxin, chiparlin and cytokinin. Whereas growth inhibitors, the term indicates that is not involved in cell division. These are also essential hormones that is involved in abscission or senescence or natural detachment of ripened leaves and fruits from the plant, thus helping to complete the life cycle. That includes abscisic acid and ethylene. Abscisic acid is also called as stress hormone whereas ethylene is called as ripening hormone, also called as senescence hormone. Now let us see the precursors of these hormones. Auxin, the precursor is amino acid tryptophan, whereas gibberellin is formed through mevalonic pathway, acetyl coenzyme A is a precursor, but the immediate precursor is kaurinoic acid. Whereas cytokinin, as you see, it is an adenine derivative, the precursor is adenosine monophosphate. Whereas abscisic acid, the precursor is zeaxanthin. And finally, ethylene, the gaseous hormone, the precursor is amino acid methionine, exactly it is S adenosyl methionine, that is converted to ACC or aminocyclopropyne carboxylic acid. Therefore, the immediate precursor of ethylene is ACC. Jasmonic acid, brassinolide, salicylic acid, etc. are primarily involved in plant defense. Let's move into the detail of each of this plant hormone, starting with auxin. Auxin are growth promoters that is involved in growth, cell division and cell differentiation. In tissue culture, high auxin concentration to cytokine ratio favors root formation, whereas low auxin to cytokinin ratio favors shoot formation. Intermediate concentration favors callus. And this combination is applicable to maturity of plants. So auxin cytokinin together are widely used in tissue culture for shooting and rooting and also for callus formation. Auxin favors apical bud dominance or activation of apical bud, whereas it inhibits lateral bud activation or keeps lateral bud dormant. Auxin promotes apical bud dominance. It favors germination, that means it breaks seed dormancy. It is involved in flowering of many plants or promotes flowering in many plants. Auxin promotes fruiting, especially parthenocarpy, the formation of fruits without fertilization, thereby forming seedless fruits. It prevents abscission or falling of leaves or aging senescence. As it is a growth promoter, it inhibits aging or senescence. It breaks dormancy as it favors germination. These are the major roles of auxin. 
Regarding the transport of auxin, auxin is often synthesized at shoot tip or shoot meristem, meristematic region. The transport is top to bottom and is polar. And top to bottom transport is called as basipetal transport. There are different types of auxins. Natural auxin, the most common one is indole acetic acid. Then there is IBA, phenyl acetic acid, etc. Synthetic auxins include 240, 245 t then NAA, methoxy dichlorobenzoic acid. These are widely used as VDCs. This 240, dicamba, and picloram. These are widely used as VDCs that selectively eliminates broadleaved plants or dicot plants. NA is widely used as rooting hormone. Widely used as rooting hormone. As we mentioned earlier, Agent Orange is a combination of 240 and 245T. Second one is Kiparlin. Kiparlin is also a growth promoter. It is primarily involved in cell division, thereby causing stem elongation. This is a rosette plant or a dwarf plant. This dwarfism can be reversed by treating with gibberlin. So when treated with gibberlin, as you can see, there is internodal elongation. This is the internodal elongation by the application of gibberlin and also flowering. This rapid growth or rapid elongation and flowering is often termed as bolting. So reversal of dwarfism or stem elongation is possible by the application of gibberlin or then it promotes germination it is involved in flowering promotes flowering of many plants it promotes fruiting just like auxin it prevents abscission as is a growth promoter it prevents abscission or aging it breaks dormancy as it promotes germination regarding the transport Kiberlin transport, there is no polarity, it moves upwards and downwards. So the transport is non-polar, unlike auxin, where transport is polar. So these are the different types of Kiberlins. Nearly 136 different Kiberlin molecules have been identified. GA3 is the most studied and the most common, whereas GA1 is involved in elongation, whereas GA9 is involved in flowering, like that. Next one is cytokinin. Cytokinin is a growth promoter, therefore it favors cell division and differentiation. We have mentioned this already. High cytokinin ratio to auxin favors shoot formation in tissue culture. Whereas low cytokinin to high auxin ratio favors root formation in tissue culture. Cytokinin is a hormone that is antagonistic to auxin's activity. Auxin favors apical bud dominance whereas cytokinin favors lateral bud growth. It favors lateral bud growth thereby inhibiting apical bud dominance. It favors germination. It favors flowering in many plants. Promotes fruiting in many plants. Often causes opening of stomata. It inhibits abscission or aging or senescence, it breaks dormancy at, as it favors germination. Regarding the transport, auxin is often synthesized in roots. So the transport is from bottom to top and often it is called as acropetal, acropetal transport. It is an adenine derivative. Kinetin is a synthetic cytokinin, whereas zetin is a natural cytokinin that is from Z maze. Now, ethylene. Ethylene is also called as ripening hormone or senescence hormone. Inhibits growth or cell division. It favors germination. Promotes flowering in some plants. Fruiting in some plants. It favors abscission. It is involved in abscission or natural detachment of ripened leaves and fruits from the plant. This is the activity of ethylene. It causes falling or natural detachment of ripened leaves and fruits. What is actually happening is the auxin concentration is decreased. Then the ethylene concentration 
is increased at the site of detachment, then alloying of leaves occurs, there will be chlorophyll degradation, then formation of an abscission layer. Let me zoom in this region. As you can see, this is the abscission layer. This abscission layer is made up of thin layer of cells, so causes the detachment without causing wound. So ethylene causes the abscission without causing any wound. So it's an important process for dispersal of seeds and also providing nutrients to young leaves and young parts of the plant. Then it breaks dormancy as it favors germination. Then one more point to add is when seedlings are treated with ethylene, there is a typical response, a triple response. Seedling stem stops elongation, elongation is stopped, then the stem thickens. There is a horizontal thickness of stem followed by bending of seedlings, forming a hook-like structure. So this is called triple response. When seedlings are treated with ethylene, there is a typical response which is called as triple response. Regarding the transport of ethylene, it, ethylene is a gaseous hormone, therefore it diffuses, it moves by diffusion to all parts of the plant. And finally, abscisic acid. Abscisic acid is also called as stress hormone. It inhibits growth. It is primarily produced during drought condition or flooding. When there is a stress, abscisic acid is synthesized more. That's why it is called a stress hormone. It prevents germination promotes flowering in short day plants, promotes fruiting in some plants, causes tomato closure especially during flooding and drought so that the transpiration rate is minimized, water loss is minimized. It favors abscission just like ethylene both work together in abscission and ripening. Abscisic acid is involved in maintaining or promoting dormancy during drought and flooding, this abscisic acid concentration increases uh, in root, especially in root. Then it closes the stoma stomatal closure, thereby prevent water loss. So abscisic acid is primarily involved in plants' survival mechanism during flooding and drought. That's why it's called as a stress hormone. Regarding the transport, there is no polarity. Uh, it can move up and down, abscisic acid is, can move up and down of the plant without any specific polarity. Abscisic acid and ethylene actually controls abscission or natural detachment of ripened leaves and fruits from the plant. And that is about the plant hormones. Thank you so much for your support. If you find this video useful, do us a favor by subscribing this channel. Thank you so much.